I just want to uh, extend a very warm welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is John Hollenberg. I'm the owner here at 5x5. Five five. Uh, well, I'm sitting here at the sunny Gold Coast here in Southeast Queensland. And uh, it is really great to have you here. So I'm the owner and founder of 5x5. Five five. This lovely lady on my finger of left, uh, her name is Carla Schesser and she is our CEO here at 5x5. Five five. And uh, this handsome chap, his name is Peter Carter. Uh, he heads up our strategy and sales at 5x5. Five five. So if for whatever reason, the internet gods are not favorable on us today, I have some backup internet connections. Uh, carry on, Pete's got some dad jokes in the bag, ready to tell you. Uh, if for whatever reason I drop out, I'll be right back. Stay with us, the show will go on. So uh, I promise to deliver some awesome content. Uh, I will play full out. Um, first of all, I just love to know where you're actually joining us from. As I said, I'm here in Southeast Queensland uh, with all our registrations that I saw coming in. Um, we we got people from all around the world. So I'd love for you just in the chat to let us know whereabouts you are coming from. Just put in the chat where you're joining us from. I saw Liz, I think she's up there in Cairns. Uh, here we go, Gold Coast, lots of Gold Coasters. Uh, we've got Dave from Adelaide's uh, Washington, Seattle, Washington. Steve, welcome. Uh, it is, it's a bit late there in the evening there. Uh, wonderful to have you on board. A uh, bunch of Melbourneites. Uh, Melbourne is my hometown. My brother is down there. I know uh, you, you've all been doing it really tough the last uh, couple of months. So our thoughts uh, are with you. We've got some Sydney ciders. Uh, Berry, New South Wales, Portsea, Victoria, good spot. I set, spent a lot of time surfing there in Portsea over the years. Um, so yeah, wonderful to have you on board. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, so these two lovely people, uh, this is an organization that we are big supporters of. Uh, this is Robin and this is Lindsay and they're a husband and wife team um, they head up an organization called Have a Feed at the Gold Coast uh, and they help uh, the homeless, the dis disadvantaged um, and they do amazing work. You'll often see them here at like Burley Waters, uh, Bunnings, cooking up a sausage, uh, sausage sizzle out the front, raising funds. Uh, so for each and every one of you for joining us, um, we are going to donate a meal to assist the disadvantaged here at the Gold Coast. So. Um, from myself to you, thank you very much for showing up. Uh, in terms of what we are covering today, I'm gonna to give you a little cross section in terms of what we are seeing in the market. So um, we as website designers, I guess are in a very privileged position. We're talking to a lot of different businesses across a wide range of industries and 2020 has been a very interesting year to say the least. So I'll be giving you sort of my two cents in terms of how I've seen the world change. Um, ultimately, as business owners, what you can do about it to adapt and evolve, uh, what those pieces of the puzzle actually look like and how you can go on and, dominant, and be a, a dominant force in your industry. We'll open this up for some Q&A. You have my commitment that uh, we will hang on to the call, uh, hang on the, the call until each and every last question is answered. Uh, so we'll make sure there's a bit of time there at the end to do so. I just want you to make sure that you hang around to the end. We're gonna be sharing some resources uh, we'll pro provide some links as well. So um, stick around and uh, we've got some stuff to send your way as well. 
So a little bit of context for anyone who doesn't know uh, me, five by five, we've got over 20 years experience in doing this. So thousands of websites delivered. Um, we've got some awesome brand experience. So everything from accountants to automobiles, lawyers, financial planners, manufacturing, you name it, we have done it. And that's what gets me really, really excited in the fact that uh, we get such a massive cross section and we are able to take these deep dives into businesses and learn so much around lots of different industries. Uh, I'm also the proud author of a book, Love at First Sight, and we'll be making this resource available at uh, the end of the session. A little bit of context around 5x5. Five five. So uh, I started knocking together websites as a 16 year old hand coding HTML uh, back in the day. Uh, for me, what really interested me was like technology. So this was back when you could like pull your computer apart and you could, you know, go and upgrade your hard drive and your RAM and all this sort of stuff. And it used to drive my mother nuts because there'd be always bits of computer everywhere. Uh, I was always really interested in design as well. So, you know, when I was a teenager, I was like, I was going to be an architect. I love to design things and sketch and do all that sort of stuff. So for me, the digital space is, is really one where those, those two disciplines uh, interact, uh, intersect, sorry. Um, and that's what gets me excited. So I know when we combine great design, awesome tech and amazing world-class content, that's when we can really move the needle on a business. So in 15 years of business, we delivered thousands of websites. We're actually Australia's highest rated website design agency based on Google reviews, which is something that I'm pretty proud of and just really good social proof and validation in terms of the value that we're delivering out in the world. I head up a team of amazing professionals of user interface designers, web developers, copywriters, search experts, project managers. Uh, we've got a, a pretty awesome team and a process to match. So when we uh, follow our process, we consistently get amazing, good outcomes for our team. So, this here, this on screen, uh, this is a picture of a man choking out another man. Um, and why am I showing you that? Uh, this is a, a martial art that I have become recently acquainted with. It's called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I'm in my week six of uh, doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've never done a martial art in my life. I've never been in a fight in my life. Uh, I'm a pretty good runner and at the, the slightest whiff of trouble, I'm usually running the other way. But it always been rattling around in my head that I wanted to do something like this. So for anyone who's not familiar with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, it's, it's a defense based martial art. And basically it's founded around grappling. Most of it happens on the ground, which is reflective of what would happen in, in real life. The fight would be on the ground. Um, and you use submission holds. And it's really about the skill of controlling your opponent and trying to get a dominant position. So why am I talking about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Um, the reason is uh, the, my journey, my hero's journey in terms of getting beaten up by uh, big 100 plus kilo uh, brutes on a mat is actually pretty similar to I think a lot of businesses journeys out there, especially what, um, what people have gone through this year in, in 2020. So I'm just gonna share my iPad and I'm gonna run through, I guess my, like, as I said, we, we get to talk to a lot of businesses and there's really three types of businesses that we are currently seeing out there in the market at the moment. Uh, and in comparison to my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu journey, this is, oops, sorry. This is the phase of, uh, of, of, I guess, the martial art that I have been 
in, which is his defense and def uh, survival mode. And the characteristics of this mode are people are frozen. And I've spent a lot of time in this sort of frozen state. They're just breathing. We spend a lot of time protecting ourselves. And we're in a mild state of panic. The end result is burnout. So a lot of the business owners that we are talking to are displaying characteristics of this. So as we move through this, the next phase is unfocused. So these business owners know that they've got to do something and they're pivoting all the time. The issue with this is there's no real strategy and it's highly reactive. So just when I think I get a few moves on the BJJ mat, um, I'm going to reactive mode because someone with more experience or whatever sees it coming a mile away and uh, they, uh, they submit me, right? Um, the final type of business owner that we're seeing is playing offense. So they're driving and they're scoring. And please excuse my handwriting. Uh, they're taking control of the fight and they are ruthlessly efficient, okay? So I've rolled with a few purple belts and a few brown belts and I am like a little plaything to these people in the fact that they will do what they want with me. Um, and in a similar capacity, a business that is really nailing their, their strategy, their digital marketing, all this sort of stuff um, is in a similar sort of space. Okay, so if we look at this, we've got A, B, and C. So what I'd love for you to do is just to reflect, where are you as a business at the moment? Are you in this defense and survival mode where you maybe you're frozen, it's, it's a bit panicky, you're feeling a bit burnt out? Are you unfocused? You're trying lots of things, but nothing's really, nothing's really sticking for you. Or are you in offense? And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of businesses out there that are doing exceptionally well. Um, so if you, if you feel open to it, I'd love just to see in the chat, where are you at from a, uh, a general sort of uh, business perspective? Are you A, B, or C? Awesome, okay, we've got a good mix. We've got a good cross section. Some A's, some B's, some offensive players, some black belts in there. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna jump back to my slides. So because there has been so much upheaval, so much change, um, and it's been bought around so quickly, um, it has forced a lot of reinvention, a lot of pivoting, 
a lot of evolutions. Um, for us, we've had to change what we do as a business. Um, and a, a mentor of mine said, look, if you're not using this time to reinvent yourself, then shame on you. So some full context, uh, this is the first sort of large scale webinar that we've done. So this is the first time that I've done this. I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone. Um, it's a tremendous opportunity to really hone these skills so that we can go and communicate with a much wider audience. So we've done a lot of physical events and all that sort of stuff historically. Um, yeah, so this is us reinventing ourselves. So when we talk about what it is we actually do for a client, we build them great looking high performing websites. But that's a bit of a surface value statement. If we peel that back a layer deeper, it's a stunning digital presence that is ultimately generating more leads and inquiries for our clients. But it doesn't cut to the heart of exactly what it is that we do. We as a digital agency, website designers and builders, we are custodians and, and guides on this journey in which we are helping our clients share their magic with the world, share their true brilliance as to who they are and working with them to bring that out and share that. So that's really the theme of today's webinar. How can we go about and share your unique brilliance and magic with the world. Can I get a little thumbs up on that in the chat? Are you? Thanks, Liz. Liz, Liz is my number one support. I've known Liz for years and years. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate your feedback. Um, so in terms of, the, <laughs> cool. Uh, in terms of how business has been done traditionally, uh, for us, it's, it's, it's been a lot of referrals. So most of our work comes through referrals. We do lots of face-to-face -face meetings or have traditionally done that. Um, we've got a team of sales, sales people that are out there pounding the pavement, doing all the traditional stuff, like your networking, your events, your face-to-face -face stuff. So this is how the world has ultimately changed is a lot of these sort of old school hustle techniques were instantly taken off the table. So then it's, well, how, how can we, we really roll with this to produce the same sort of results and outcomes that we had historically been doing? So when we start working with a client, first question we, we ask them is, well, what's actually a website gonna do for you as a business? Why do you want a website? And it usually falls into one of two questions or one or two statements, sorry. The, the first is to sell a product or a service to someone you've never met. So literally someone goes to Google, types in accountant Gold Coast, and uh, they fill out the contact form or they pick up the phone and get in touch. And this is a, a brand new person. So for us, we get a lot of those inquiries, people searching on website designers. The second reason would be to provide validation that you are an expert in the field. So an example with that would be, you know, if I'm looking for an accountant, I ask uh, another business owner mate who basically, you know, I say, are you happy with your accountant? Yes, Mary does a great job. You should talk to Mary. I then go on Google Mary and I see that Mary has an awesome website and she seems like an authority and a leader and she's investing herself in her business and the content that she's creating and all this sort of stuff. So it provides me with that validation that she is an expert in the field and I'd reach out to Mary. So I would love for you to answer that question. What is your reason? Uh, you could do A, to sell something to someone you have never met or B, to provide validation that you are an expert in your field. Uh, so we've got, Dave says B, Greg, A and B. Yes, yeah, so you're 100% correct, Greg. Uh, for us, it is both A and B. We want to engage with new people, but we also generate a lot of work off referrals. A little bit of B, a little bit of A, A. Cool, okay. Angus, A and B. 
Nice. Okay. I'm just going to get a quick drink of water. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just talking about um, what we call this zero moment of truth. So how the, the world has traditionally operated from an advertising uh, perspective is there is some sort of stimulus that happens. So to give you an example of stimulus, they, uh, a company might run some ads on TV or send out a direct mail campaign. We've uh, posted an ad in the newspaper. Um, we've read an email from a brand and there's some stimulus that happens. Okay. Then what we see is this, what we call the first moment of truth. And this really gets, gets someone, uh, you know, into maybe a store or on a sales conversation or something like that. They talk to a sales person and they maybe try or sample a product. The second moment of truth is then when you get that product home, you play it, play with it, you experience it. Um, that's what we call the customer experience. So what the internet has done is put in an additional step into this mix before the first, first moment of truth, which is what we call the zero moment of truth. And this was actually a phrase which was coined by Google in a research paper going back, I think around 11 or 12 years ago now. Um, and obviously search engines are a big part of that. So let me describe this, the zero moment of truth. We as consumers are now empowered to go and consume things like video testimonials, detailed buyer guides, blog posts, hours and hours of YouTube footage, researching the new car that you're gonna buy or the, the new yeah, whippersnapper or whatever that you're looking at, all these consumer reviews. It might be like a physical book, similar to the one that I've written. You might listen to podcasts or spend time on product review websites, all this sort of stuff. So this is the zero moment of truth. And what will happen is us as business owners, the people that spend the most amount of time and effort to build assets or digital assets in their business, in and around their products and services are the ones that will obviously reap those benefits. So that when someone comes through to talk to a salesperson, a lot of the time the consumer is actually more informed than the actual salesperson uh, because of all the research and everything that they've done. So us as business owners, ideally we need to rack up seven hours of content. And the thing with the human brain is it lumps together all this content together. Uh, I could send you a physical copy of my book and you could sit there and read that book. And from page to page, it'll probably take you around three and a half hours to finish it. What your brain tells you is I've spent three and a half hours with John. The great thing is that John wasn't laying in bed with me, you know, explaining about website design and all that sort of stuff. That'd be slightly creepy, right? So uh, seven hours, over 11 touch points, and these touch points can be everything from books to, to physical conversations, to a webinar like this, to YouTube videos, to social media posts, to blog posts, you name it. There's all these digital touch points in there. And ideally, that's spread out over four platforms. So we've got seven hours, 11 touch points, over four platforms. Here's our sales process. Um, so this is what we do here at five by five in terms of how we engage with the client. So we get leads off the back of search engine optimization. We're also paying for specific leads as well. We send money to the Google gods and pay per click. We've got an email list. We get work from traditional referrals. We've got a diagnostic tool. Uh, we partner up with different businesses as well. We run physical workshop and events and webinars and all that sort of stuff. We do a little bit of paid 
traffic as well uh, off the back of search. Oh, sorry, uh, social. So when someone comes through to us, they'll either pick up the 1300 number, they'll fill out, we've got a very detailed briefing form on our website, or they'll engage in some live chat. One of our, uh, one of our sales guys, Pete or Sheldon, they would pick up the phone and do a discovery call. And we would make sure that we aligned in and around timing, budget, now we're talking to a decision maker. We make sure that we send a copy of the physical book um, that gets sent out. Uh, we jump on a 30 minute Zoom call like this. And this really just sort of validates that we are experts in what we do, our approach, all that sort of stuff. And I guess the real next step from that is to get a client into a strategy workshop. So this paid workshop costs $500. Um, we provide over four hours of value. It's fully interactive and engaging. The client learns a lot about digital. We learn a lot about the client. Uh, the client will understand the competitive landscape, the opportunities, the process, all that sort of stuff. So from this, we're able to formulate a really detailed web strategy. And then that's presented via Zoom or in person to the client and we're able to answer any questions that they might have. The end outcome is a yes or a no. And it's pretty definitive in the fact that by the, by the time the client gets through this whole process, we have racked up the 11 hours, sorry, the seven hours, 11 touch points over four platforms. And um, in their mind, they either say, yes, John and the team are awesome people and we would love to partner with them to build our website or no, it's just not a right fit. Okay. So this is, I guess us as business owners, what we want to do is figure out these different touch points or digital uh, sort of steps in that sales journey and everyone's engagement and sales process is going to be slightly different, but this allows you to share your magic magic in a very, very, leveraged way. So if we're talking about how we share our clients magic with the world, what we want to make sure is we're building authority. We want to be the authorities in our cho chosen industry or space. We need our website to generate leads and inquiries. And we also need to convert those inquiries. So there's no point having a heap of traffic come through to your website if you're not able to convert those leads. So using this as the, the overlap here, so we're building authority and we want to increase our conversion rate. This really comes down to site psychology. And there's different levers that we can pull that affects this. So I'm going to run through those. As we go through this, um, I'll get you just to do a bit of a self-assessment and score yourself. Um, building authority and generating leads usually comes back, comes off the back of crafted content. And that's how you can then move the needle there. And generating leads, but most importantly, converting those leads means having some technical intelligence in terms of what's actually happening on your website. So as I said, we're going to run through these and I'm going to show you some very specific examples of different websites and how they go about utilizing those different sort of characteristics and techniques. And I'll get you just to do a little bit of a self assessment. So the first step in here, is having a brilliant brand. We have three user interface designers on staff here and we put a lot, a lot of emphasis on the design side of things. Um, your brand is your foundation. If you sort of look at a building analogy, if you are not building on a solid foundation, then everything will come crumbling down around you. Sorry. Uh, so that is really about having a style guide, a rule book in terms of what you can and can't do with your brand. Having a 
consistent pack of logos that goes out to every single supplier, to every platform that you're active on. And most importantly, consistent usage of that. So I'll give you a practical example. A lot of times clients will come to us and they don't actually have their brand in order. They've got an old you know, logo that's it's a bit tired, it needs to freshen up. So we'll actually assist, we'll provide what we call a style guide. And this is a rule book in terms of what you can and can't do in terms of overall fonts, real world examples of what that might look like, colors, CMYK, RGB, hex values, color distribution in terms of the emphasis of each color and its distribution, what not to do, Here's another one for a local builder here at the Gold Coast, CMR Constructions. And in a similar fashion, it's very clear in terms of what you can and can't do. And um, they could provide this to any supplier and in theory, get a good consistent outcome. So that's really around having a brilliant brand. The next lever we can pull is the user interface. And the real key here is to make sure the user interface is logical, there's no clutter, it's easy to follow, it's clearly laid out, and there's minimal navigation items. So to give you an example, let me just open up. We saw the Key Investments brand on screen just before. This is how it then translated to an actual website. So you can see here, we've got lots of nice visuals and we'll get to the visuals in a sec. Uh, these guys actually sell a lot of new property off the plan to international buyers. So this is a prime example of someone who has to use their digital asset, their website to work super hard for them. Because a lot of the time, these guys have never actually met their clients. Their clients are in Hong Kong, they're in China, and they're selling whole pen penthouse apartments here at the Gold Coast uh, to, to their clients. So they're super clear in terms of what they do. They've got a great headline, which summarizes that. There's lots of nice photography. The key benefits, so this is really ticking a lot of psychological boxes in people's heads in terms of who they are, 20 plus years experience, specializing in new properties, latest range, uh, their investment focused, cross section of their actual properties. And then the individuals, people buy from people. So it's really important that each of the respective individuals are up front. Different testimonials, so video testimonials, and then some strong calls to action. That's what we're talking about when we look at a very clean and nicely laid out user interface. Here's another example. This is Automotive Hospital. Um, this is a prestige car servicing business based out of uh, inner, inner West Sydney. Um, and same deal, they're using very sort of similar techniques to reassure the end user that they are in the right spot to get their BMW, their Mercedes, their Audi serviced. So we use great design, lots of nice white space, all the trust and validation items that someone would want to see when they, uh, they trust their expensive baby uh, to get serviced, okay? So that's what we talk about user interface. The third is stunning visuals. So what do we mean by that? A lot of the time, it's just having good quality photography. Photography can make or break a website and too often we see people using stock photography for a small investment uh, and a custom photo shoot, you're gonna have some amazing assets that you can utilize in lots of different areas, not only just on your website, through social media, through maybe traditional marketing and brochures, all that sort of stuff. Um, ideally, there's some video in there as well. So both of those examples I showed you previously on screen, they both use uh, video. We've got iconography, um, and infographics as well. So let me show you an example of what a good custom photo shoot might look like. We actually flew down to, to, to Sydney, 
back when we could hop on a plane. Um, and we put together this photo shoot for the guys at Automotive Hospital. And you can see that they now have these awesome images that can be scattered in and around their website. And it actually shows real people. That's what people want to see. So really what we're trying to do with these photo shoots is simulate what a client journey actually looks like. From the moment I walk through that front door, what does the client journey actually look like? So people can then uh, forward process that. So we're coming back up here. We've got authority and leads. A big driver is crafted content. And that really comes down to exceptional copy. I'll show you a local example here at the Gold Coast. Um, this is a business called Cross Carpets. They've been around for four generations, um, which is pretty unheard of, especially here at the Gold Coast, which is a pretty young place. But they, uh, they own that and that is front and center. Very much this skew towards Australian owned uh, as well. Um, they're very clear on the products and the areas that they operate in. So they do a lot of commercial work. They do more sort of high end stuff as well. So it was really important that the website reflected that. At a glance, we can see they're a fourth generation business. They specialize in natural floor, uh, flooring. They're family owned business. They have an emphasis on sustainability. They've got a great team and it's very easy. Like they, they've got, you know, pictures of their, uh, the, the display there in Southport as well. So this is just ticking a lot of the psychological boxes that uh, they are a leader and an expert and they're, they're differentiating themselves from maybe some of the more traditional carpet retail retailers out there in the marketplace. We wanna be very clear in our client avatar with our copy. We want a consistent tone. We wanna make sure that there's strong calls to action and then it's interesting, have a bit of fun with it. Make sure your personality comes out through the content as well. That's super duper important. We go up here, engaging video. I'm a big fan of video. Video allows me to look down the barrel of the camera and I can eyeball you. You can make a whole bunch of assertions and judgments about me that I'm a nice friendly guy and that I care about getting you a good quality outcome. Video has the power of doing that. If you can share your why, why it is you get out of bed every single day and do what you do, whether it's service cars, sell carpet, sell off the plan real estate. These are real people telling real stories. And ideally it's done in a storytelling manner. I'm gonna show you a quick example of what the automotive hospital guys do. Uh, vehicle is taken care of. At the end of the day, the vehicle is taking you wherever you want to go. Can you hear that uh, audio, Carla? This is, is more personal. Maybe it's a little. The important part of this business, we want to talk to you. We want to know. We want to know what the ins and outs are. What the concern is with the vehicle, period. And I feel that that, that touch point there is very important to us. Yeah. Carla actually featured in this video. She, uh, she did an amazing job simulating what a real client would look like dropping off their car. Um, what we'll do, we'll actually put together an email at the end of this and provide a few examples in terms of what we covered off on, just to paint a picture as to what a good quality why video might look like. Um, so I'll let you consume that in your own time. But as you can see, um, what it does is it just shows you what that client journey might look like. The moment you walk through the door in terms of the service, the process, all that sort of stuff. That's what we want our uh, digital assets and website to basically do. We've then got meaningful blogs. And when we talk about blogging or content creation, Sometimes people think it's just like another thing to do in their business. Um, but the power of this is, is just amazing. 
what it allows you to do is go very deep around a very specific topic. And ideally it's around a thousand words in total. If you can be consistent with that, either weekly or fortnightly, awesome. And really what you want to do is you want to provide useful, helpful, quick wins. So to give you an example, this is another client of ours. This is Stack Law. They have been consistently publishing content uh, for the last four to five years and they've been quite prolific in terms of the cadence and the frequency in terms of how they've been doing that. So you can see for August, I think it was something like eight, uh, eight blog posts in, in total. If we look at uh, a sample bit of content about posting fake reviews online could cost you thousands, fairly specialized. Um, I'm sure this, this blog post ranks really well. You can see it's roughly probably six to 700 words, this one. Um, and what the impact of this has had is as follows. So this, I, I know there's no, um, there's no legend on this access, but basically this was 2015 before the new website was launched. And they were roughly getting, I think, three to 400 uh, visits on their website every single month. Um, this is measuring organic traffic and the general trend behind that. So how much traffic are they generating off the back of Google? Fast forward to roughly last month, and they're up to about 13 and a half thousand unique visits off the back of Google every single month. So this translates to real leads, real inquiries through their, uh, their website. I've got a question from Lisa. Who writes the content? Content and wording is so difficult and readers get fatigued with the same wording. It's hard. Uh, 100%. I agree with all those comments, Lisa. There are people in the world, people like uh, Liz Campbell. Um, she is, uh, she's a very talented copywriter who's also on this, uh, this call. Um, she specializes in doing that. Um, if, if for whatever reason, content, creating content grates in you, it doesn't resonate with you, you're not in flow doing it, then I would highly recommend finding someone else, either an industry specific writer or someone who just gets you, gets your vibe, gets your industry, gets your business to do it for you. And maybe it's a, it's a monthly blog post. Um, anything is better than nothing at the end of the day. So that would be my advice around that. Um, there's other creative ways of doing it. And we're probably going to run out of time um, today to cover off on that, but other creative ways to be able to uh, create content without physically having to sit down at, at the typewriter and, uh, and type it out. Right. Um, so maybe that's a topic for another future webinar. Um, we're, we're bringing it home, stick with me. This is the home stretch. We're generating leads. We wanna convert those leads. This is around technical intelligence. How do we do this? Ideally through some sort of diagnostic tool. And what this diagnostic tool is doing is it's revealing where potential gaps exist. It allows you to provide some quick wins in a very leveraged fashion. It ties in so perfectly to that zero moment of truth because it allows people to self-serve. They can do it in their own time. What you can do is collect valuable data from your clients and then feed that data through to a CRM or an email marketing tool. So let me show you a practical example of this. Um, this, this is another client of ours, a guy called Greg Layton. He's based there in Melbourne, a lovely guy. Uh, he comes from a high performance sporting background and uh, he calls himself the chief maker, helping people be the chief of uh, their life. So he has got a thing called a career scorecard. Now, if we look at this scorecard, really he's got a five-step methodology in terms of how he works with and engages with his clients. He helps them with their track record, the assets they have in place, the entourage, the people they're hanging out with and rubbing shoulders with. What does their daily routine look like and what's the plan for success in the future? And then off the back of this, he then asked them a whole bunch of interesting questions in which they answer yes, somewhat, or no. 
And if we go through it, I'll quickly jump through it. And it's up to you how many questions you have. And this is just one example of that. This can come in different shapes or fashion. It asks for a name, an email address, and essentially they are then redirected to a page that provides their score out of 100, provides them with some quick wins, some resources they can download. They also get an email that automatically shows up with that same information. So by implementing some sort of diagnostic tool like this, um, you're learning a lot about your clients and it allows you then to have a more meaningful conversation if you need to pick up the phone and get in touch or engage and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm just going to check the chat. Uh, sorry, this is a question around Google Analytics. So uh, we have dominant SEO and that's that, that ties into Google Analytics quite nicely. Um, a lot of our solutions are built off the back of driving lots of very targeted traffic through Google search engine optimization and having a dominant, uh, really a dominant competitive advantage there. We're writing content written for humans. Ideally, this is in the long form. Google still very much likes the long form content. This keeps them very happy. happy. This drives traffic. It generates leads. The important bit is it needs to be set up correctly from the outset, which, which ties into your structure and all this sort of stuff. Let me give you a very practical example of this. This is Automotive Hospital and a lot of their leads and inquiries are driven off this exact strategy. So they service lots of different makes of cars. If we look at the BMW service page, this specific page then hones in on only BMWs. So all the trust and validation items that they are who they say they are, the different sort of models, that they service in the BMW range, BMW specific images, more content related to BMW repairs, frequently asked questions around BMWs, blogs only relating to BMW issues, BMW oil leaks and engine transplant that they did for a BMW. And then testimonials that are taken from their Google reviews from BMW owners that just happens to mention all the words in and around BMWs. So when Google looks at this page, it is very, very specific and targeted in and around BMW. This specific phrase here generates roughly around 800 unique searches every single month from Google. And if I search on it, Google knows that I'm sitting here at the Gold Coast, so I'm not in Sydney. So it's not, it's not uh, showing the, the this business as such. These first two listings are the, the actual BMW dealerships. So Google will always give priority to the brand owner. Um, but then what happens is automotive hospital are sitting in that nice third position. I think this one search phrase gets them 100, 150 unique searches every single month. We can interchange this with Land Rover. They're in the mix. Volvo. They're in the mix. So super powerful technique the end outcome of this in 12 months is we launched a new site and we can see and this is taken from google analytics this is a nice upward trend in terms of traffic you can see there's a little bit of dip there in the coronavirus sort of funkiness but even still the trend continues it's generated a whole bunch of new traffic from the old website the, old, the new website compared to the old website, 86% of all search now comes off the back of that. This is actually from another client in a very similar industry, but has yielded uh, very similar results in the fact that there's a whole bunch of bookings and inquiries off the back of that. 
So it's really, it is a super powerful technique. It is one that can take a little time to get firing, will require a little bit of effort from a content perspective, but when you put it all together, uh, in terms of all these different things, can work exceptionally well. And that ties in to the final step, which is in and around providing an amazing user experience. So we need to make sure that mobile experience is good, that the user flow through the website is logical, that you, know, you can tell through Google Analytics around where people are bouncing off, that the load time is loading in and under three seconds, making sure that the pages all nice, uh, load nice and quick, that there's plenty of white space, we've got the strong calls to action, and we've got consistency in through the website. So they're pretty much the levers. How did we go? Um, what I would love you to do in the chat is maybe give me your number one takeaway and biggest learning from that information that I've just provided so far. Uh, KPI theme, Colin, love it. Elizabeth, diagnostic tool. Elena, Zedmot, nice, nice. Rod, blog regularly, that's cool. Um, Brian says the Venn diagram that shows all the elements and how they fit together uh, to get the end result, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, that is a really good, good takeaway. Thank you, mate. Um, it's funny when you actually unpack what you do for a client, sometimes us as business owners, we're too close to it. Uh, so when you break it down, it just shows the value that you're providing. Warren says it's not a sprint. Consistency is important. I love that. That is my overarching theme in life. Uh, just small little incremental steps done consistently over time, generate big results. And that's no different to your website. Um, you're going to, Catherine's going to rejig her diagnostic tool. Uh, Andrew says automotive hospitals are real eye opener. Uh, James selling personality. Love it. Love it. Oh, Jonathan Mills, uh, real keys are visuals, great copy blogs and video on personality. Yes. Spot on Jonathan. So in terms of generally how we approach, um, each one of these strategies is, uh, what we call our co-pilot approach. And um, in that, it's highly collaborative. So we deep dive in each and every single business that we work with. It's very driven around outcomes. So we get aligned about what are the outcomes and what's gonna move, move the needle most for our clients. It's very fast. So uh, 90 days from start to finish is all it takes to implement a strategy like this. We draw on each other's strengths uh, it's a positive experience. You don't have to hate your website designer. And we are with you side by side every step of the way. So I'm just going to draw you one more pretty picture, if that is all right. Uh, so, uh, sorry. Um, in terms of where we are at, we are here today and if we fast forward as i said 90 days is practically all it takes to deliver a digital strategy similar to the ones that i've shown you today a little bit scary but that basically takes us through to december um, we basically have four options here the first option is to do nothing. And the outcomes of that, well, when we hit December, it's the same. We've got no extra clients. And we are further behind because as coronavirus rolls through, people are digitizing competitors are jumping on board and more than likely uh, they are implementing similar sort of strategies. 
The section op second option would be to wait. And the issue with this is realistically, you're unlikely to implement. The other issue is nothing really changes. So that's if we wait. Maybe you want to go and do it yourself. And that's great because you are going to do something and you might get some quick wins. But it's debatable whether you can execute a full and remarkable complete strategy. The final option would be what I call the PEAT factor. Does anyone want to know what this PEAT factor is? I'm going to tell you what the PEAT factor is. I'm going to draw a little picture of PEAT. This is PEAT here. This is what allows for mass acceleration to really make sure that when December and January 2021 rolls around, you have got your house in order and you can hit the ground running. So I'm just gonna jump back to my slides. This is Pete, this is the Pete factor. He is a, a wonderful, lovable guy who loves a chat. Um, what I'm suggesting is if anyone is interested in uh, taking the next step and figuring out what opportunities exist, jump on our discovery call with Pete. Uh, what we will do is we will understand you, who you are, what you do, who you do it for, what do your products look like, what is your sales and engagement process look like, ultimately how you are putting dollars into a bank account. Uh, we will understand the, the competitive landscape as well. So who are your competitors? Uh, what are they doing to succeed? There's some awesome analytical tools out there to see who's actually crushing it in a specific industry. Um, we can audit their digital presence and uncover gaps and opportunities that exist. The end outcome is you'll really understand what the competitive landscape looks like. Uh, from a remarkable solution perspective, this is then where we paint a more industry specific uh, picture as to what a solution might look like for you and show you some real case studies in and around your specific industry and the process, process for delivery. So you'll know by the end of that exactly what the process looks like. Uh, here's a link. Carla is going to put a link to this in the chat. She already has, fantastic. Um, uh, just fill out the form. I'll actually bring that up on screen and show you. This is it here. You can read a little bit more around Peter. Uh, Peter actually comes from a commercial radio background, has been in marketing for over 15 years. Um, this is the form here. Uh, we will follow this up with an email as well and provide that link. Fill out the form and we will be in touch. So we've also, we've already covered the number one learning. Um, the resource that we were talking about and we are coming right up to one o'clock. So we've actually nailed this timing. Um, anyone's interested, you can go to 5by5.com.au slash book. Carla will put that in the chat as well. You can listen on Spotify. I'm a big Spotify fan. I listen to this a lot. Um, you are more than welcome to go and listen to this book in audio book format through Spotify. So without further ado, I encourage you to go out and share your magic with the world. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying. I appreciate your time. Uh, go and create some magic in the world. Thank you.